In late 2023, a new road tunnel under construction in the Indian Himalayas collapsed, trapping 41 workers inside for more than two weeks. It led to one of the most intense rescue operations in recent history. This emergency was a huge wake-up call. The investigation that followed unearthed multiple failings. Two years later, there was a breakthrough on a rail tunnel in the same region that also came close to tragedy. From ignoring warning signs to inadequate surveys, India's attempts to build new infrastructure through the world's biggest mountain range have at times been extremely dangerous. Now the country's begun an even greater challenge, its longest ever tunnel. And once again, they've decided to build it here. Welcome to the Himalayas, the highest and newest mountain range on Earth. But we're not in Nepal, Tibet, or even Bhutan. This is Uttarakhand in India. It's an area of breathtaking beauty known as the Land of the Gods. That's because it's home to the Chota Chardam, a series of Hindu temples and pilgrimage sites. Millions of pilgrims travel here every year, but let's just say their journeys aren't exactly straightforward. The existing roads are narrow with single lanes. They can become inaccessible in winter and the monsoon season, while more than half of the state is at high risk of landslides. Which is why a 900 km highway project is underway to upgrade these routes and build better connections between the sites. By replacing them with two-lane highways and tunnels that can cut through some of the worst spots, travellers are going to be able to take much shorter, safer trips. Although it's a major piece of new infrastructure, and obviously incredibly important to the region and Hindus across India, it's generally not the sort of thing that would make global news. Until the 12th of November 2023, when the eyes of the world fell on this remote location, around 100 miles from the state capital. The race is on to rescue construction workers who have been stuck since Sunday morning in India. As efforts ramp up to get 41 people out of this collapsed mountain tunnel. Men were working inside the tunnel when the entrance gave way yesterday. A 4.5 kilometer long tunnel under construction as part of the project caved in without warning. Dozens of workers were inside at the time and within an instant found themselves trapped. The collapse happened 270 meters from the southern entrance at Silk Yara. And because the tunnel had not yet been joined in the middle, their only escape route was blocked. They had just one connection to the outside world, a tiny emergency tunnel that provided them with air, food, medical supplies and water. An international expert was called in to help. Meet Professor Arnold Dix. He was, at the time, president of the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association. So I, I got a call from the chief engineer of India on WhatsApp, and uh, he told me he had a problem. He sent me some pictures, and he asked me what I would do. And the next minute, I was talking to the principal advisor to the prime minister of India, and I was explaining why I thought what I thought would be a good idea, and then they just asked me if I could pop over and give him a hand. Once Arnold arrived at the site and assessed the situation, it was time to create a rescue plan. An auger machine, basically a big drill, was brought in to dig an escape route. But it wasn't the only thing they tried. Several methods were executed simultaneously to increase their chances of success. We had a vertical drill coming from the surface down, which is like pushing a pin down through the mountain. We had a team assessing coming from the back. We had a team launching a TBM from the side. And we also had another team working on a very old fashioned, like a mining solution, hugging the side of the tunnel and bracing it. And we ran all of them concurrently. Eventually, it was the auger that got them out. Well, sort of. It broke down just before reaching the target area. So a group of miners ended up digging the rest of the way using manual drills, and after 17 terrifying days, the rescuers were able to free everyone in sight. Now, while it was a huge relief that no one was seriously hurt, this was a real warning sign about the dangers of building infrastructure in this area, and it's not the first sign there's been. Believe it or not, this is not the only tunnel in this area to have come close to disaster. Around 200 kilometers to the southeast, another tunnel in the same state, this time for rail, broke through in April 2025. 
but only after some serious complications. When the tunnel boring machine reached the 5 kilometer point, about a third of the way through, there was a sudden gush of water. At this moment, according to the project director, the tunnel was at risk of flooding or collapsing. But they managed to correct it by taking corrective measures. So, is it a coincidence that two tunnels under construction so close together either collapsed or came very close to it? Well, probably not, because it turns out that carrying out this kind of work in these mountains in particular is exceptionally challenging. Firstly, there are shear zones all over the place. That's where an area of higher strain is formed within the surrounding rock caused by tectonic activity. Tunnelling in areas where they're present can lead to instability, ingress of water or mud, and even collapse. Then there's the type of rock that's being tunnelled through, which can vary greatly in terms of hardness, and it's not always possible to know exactly what kind of rock you're going to encounter. So this is the actual rock from the tunnel collapse. Even here, sitting at my desk, it's very soft. It's old seabed uh, raised up thousands of metres into the air, getting pushed up very rapidly. So you, you need to be very respectful of those dynamic conditions. You have to be uh, reactive. So if you see it's not behaving how you expect, you have to react to that. Another challenge is working with materials that can change the further underground they are. Those rocks we see up on the surface, they're not behaving like that once you're deep in a mountain. They're, they're actually behaving like a quite a different substance altogether. I attribute the mountains with a sense of life. I don't see them as like dead rock. I actually see them as a living thing because actually they move and they squeeze and they, they misbehave and they do all sorts of things. All of this means you have to be very careful when digging here or run the risk of problems like the ones we've seen. Building tunnels in a territory that's prone to earthquakes, floods and landslides would be a tough job for anyone. But some of the presumed causes of the collapse were unfortunately man-made. One engineering geologist found evidence of poor workmanship and a lax approach to tunnelling practices. An official report revealed defamations were not properly addressed and there was negligence from the contractor towards previous issues. And these were plain to see, as Arnold discovered when he first went into the tunnel after the collapse. So I've entered the portal and I'm now walking towards where the, the, well, the collapse is still occurring. I count 21 prior collapses. I can see the scars as I'm walking down through the tunnel. And so I realise this hasn't just happened out of the blue. There's something systemic wrong. No one's thought about changing the method or no one's thought about changing the profile or no one's thought about changing the, um, the support system. It was awful. They might have experienced difficulties lately, but tunnelers in this country have had some success in the past. India has already built a nine kilometre long road tunnel in the Himalayas, bypassing the notorious Rotang Pass. With an altitude of over 10,000 feet, the Atal Tunnel has cut travel times between the town of Manali and this pair of valleys by more than four hours. But even this had its challenges. It meant digging through a fault zone, and there were points where up to 8,000 litres of water a minute were coming into the tunnel. It all meant they had to be really, really careful. One 600 metre stretch took them four years to get through. The fact there have been these scary moments on multiple projects hasn't been enough to stop India building any more tunnels into the Himalayas. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Further to the northwest, in a region that's even more hostile for several reasons, there's another 19 projects in the pipeline. We're talking about Ladakh and the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir, which has been the subject of disputes between India, Pakistan and China for decades. It's an area that's understandably not well connected because building those connections is kind of tricky. Travelling between these places means taking one of these long winding roads, all of which are pretty treacherous. Like the Zajilla Pass, for example. A trip along the worst part of it can take up to four hours. Which is why they're now building this, the Zojilla Tunnel. Under construction almost 12,000 feet above sea level, it'll bring that journey time down to just 15 minutes. And because it's subterranean, the road can be used all year round. 
If that wasn't already impressive, this is also set to be the longest tunnel ever built in India, stretching to 13 kilometers. So far, there have been no major catastrophes, which could be to do with the tunneling technique they've chosen. Contractor Mega Engineering and Infrastructures opted for what's called the New Austrian Tunneling Method. It's where the strength of the surrounding material is utilized as much as possible, with ground stability monitored continuously. Blasting is involved, but support is provided in the form of rock bolts, steel ribs or mesh, and shotcrete. If you've never heard of that, it's a type of concrete that's sprayed onto the tunnel walls immediately after excavation. The tunnel is then finished off with a waterproof lining, followed by another layer of concrete. Now, we should clarify here that this method isn't unique to the Zodula Tunnel. In fact, it's been chosen for projects across the region, including on the one that collapsed. But as Arnold said, being able to adjust the approach as and when problems occur is all part of it, which perhaps wasn't done effectively in the past. Other tunneling techniques have been deployed as well, including eight cut and cover tunnels through the more low-lying areas. These are made by first digging a trench in the ground, constructing the tunnel lining inside, and then backfilling over the top. Meanwhile, in the main tunnel, three vertical shafts up to 500 meters in height are being placed along it to provide ventilation. The first has already had a literal breakthrough. A pilot tunnel was successfully completed in July 2025, which will now be gradually enlarged until it reaches the full 7.5 meter diameter. But guess what? Despite all the care that's been taken, despite all that high-tech equipment, things haven't gone as smoothly as everyone would have liked. Although it's now more than 40% complete, this tunnel has had its fair share of obstacles, which explains why the original deadline of December 2026 has now been pushed back by four years. Back to the Silk Yarra Tunnel, and 2025 has seen the news take a more positive turn. In April, the two ends finally met in the middle, bringing excavation work to an end. And yet, despite that milestone, there's still a long way to go until it's completely finished. Still, after what happened, having to wait a little bit longer for it to open is nothing compared to what might have been. It's insane. Like, I can't believe it's true, but it is true. And we did perform a bit of a miracle, I think. I know when I, I met a whole lot of the kids afterwards, because they're just kids, I was like, oh my God, we really have given 41 people a second chance at life. We've seen tunnels built through similar terrain before without serious incidents. These attempts show us that building infrastructure in the Himalayas is more difficult than many could imagine. With those calamities now in the past, India must prove that it can tame this unforgiving landscape by taking the stakes even higher. Let's just hope the mountains don't have other ideas. Don't forget that we're raising awareness of construction's mental health crisis and supporting charities in this space through our Get Construction Talkie initiative. You can learn more and find links to support over at getconstructiontalking.org. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.